Hello everybody, if you like this video, please consider donating to us on Patreon. We want to keep on making education free and available to everybody, um, no matter what. So this is a perfect way to do that. There are different tiers and different ways you can donate. If you did enjoy this lesson and you've got some money to spare, please consider donating on Patreon. So far we've been looking at a series of events that occurred during the First World War in 1917 in Russia and leading through from the February Revolution, the establishment of this dual power between the Provisional Government and the Petrograd Soviet and now into the October Revolution. So as an introduction, as a, uh, as a background to the October Revolution, uh, in October 1917, Lenin and Trotsky overthrew this provisional government. So we've talked about the provisional government in lessons before. okay, um, And in the place of this provisional government came a new revolutionary government. And what we're going to do in this lesson is have a look at the series of events which brought uh, the provisional government uh, effectively down. The kind of things that, the things that happened that led to the support of this new revolutionary government uh, chaired by Lenin and Trotsky. So the first thing we should probably know is the June, off the June offensive in the First World War and the political consequences that that, uh, that, that um, brought about with it. So in June 1917, the provisional government had launched a renewed attack on the Austro-Hungarian army. Okay, So despite the fact that the revolution, the February revolution, the February Revolution uh, was uh, partially due, partially uh, due to uh, due to the uh, intervention, uh, the, the 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 way the First World War was going, to World War One. Uh, the Provisional Government decided that they still wanted to carry on, and they launched a new offensive uh, on the the Austro-Hungarian Army. And it became known as the June Offensive, okay? And surprise, surprise, the June Offensive was a failure, okay? It led to mass desertions, uh, it led to a breakdown of army discipline, okay? It led to a, num a, lot of, uh, a number of deaths, okay? It cost a lot of money, as everything in, this, uh, in the First World War did for Russia, okay? Cadet ministers resigned from the government on July the 3rd, okay? And the Bolsheviks turned this kind of offensive into an opportunity. Don't forget, Lenin came back in about April time. So, so Lenin returned. Lenin returned. Okay, uh, in uh, sorry March, March, April time. Okay, and he promised his almost his manifesto was the. Peace, land, and bread. Peace, land, and bread. And this is important because the the primary, uh, the first uh, of these three promises, peace, was something that was very popular at the time. So the June offensive effectively goes starkly against uh, Lenin's promise of peace uh, and the end of the First World War for Russia. And so therefore the Bolsheviks turned the June offensive into an opportunity and encouraged soldiers and workers to protest against it and to protest against uh, the provisional government. So against against the provisional government. Provisional government. Okay. And as a result, around 70,000 soldiers and armed workers uh, went to a Torade, pra, p the Torade Palace in Petrograd. Okay, And this was where the Provisional Government and the Petrograd Soviet were being housed. There were two days of riots. The Provisional Government accused Lenin of being a German spy, which is quite interesting. Uh, therefore, um, Lenin had to again flee to escape arrest. So the provisional government effectively blamed things on Lenin and tried to get him arrested. And in the course of these two days of riots, uh, Prince Lvov resigned uh, resigned his position. Okay. So following the resignation of uh, Prince Lvov, okay, Kerensky had to form what was called a government of salvation of the revolution. 
okay that's what they they wanted to form in the in the place of this this very very quickly crumbling provisional government okay he needed to restore order in russia and it's for this reason that uh, general uh, levar uh, kornilov was appointed to take back control so general kornilov was appointed to try and take back control of these riots and to try and um salvage the uh, provisional government um and to try just to try and salvage uh, order and peace uh, within the state Kolonov wanted to put the Petrograd under military rule. However, Kerensky uh, refused to allow that. And so Kerensky dismissed Korn Kornilov. Okay, and then Kornilov decided to send troops to march on Petrograd. And Kerensky had to ask the Petrograd Soviet to defend Petrograd. So Kerensky, don't forget, was somebody who was... Um, in a unique position of being able to um, operate within the the sort of dual power of the provisional government and the Petrograd Soviet, he wanted to try and restore peace and order following the riots and the resignation of Prince Lvov. So he got this uh, general to try and take back control. Um, Kornilov wanted to do something that Kerensky refused, and then therefore Kornilov decided to just to try and rally against him and it was up to Kerensky to um, ask the Petrograd Soviet to defend Petrograd this wasn't a very good look the calling of coup so with all that being said with the uh, events that we've just talked about what do we see when we talk about how the the role that Trotsky played during the revolution so one of the important things was that Trotsky was the chair of the Petrograd Soviet Okay, and he had joined the Bolsheviks in June. Okay, so the June offensive really did um, did promote a lot of revolutionary activity, seen as how much of a failure it was, and the fact that um, the revolutionaries were trying to um, push and promote um, revolution and disorder within the state, within people. Okay, so he also headed the Military Revolutionary Committee which is abbreviated to the MRC. And this was an armed group um, organized along military lines. Okay, And in mid-October, the provisional government attempted to shut down two Bolshevik newspapers. Um, they obviously knew that it was the Bolsheviks that were trying to overthrow this government. And Trotsky was able to use the fears about Kerensky's orders as a sort of pretext to... Um, get the uh, military revolutionary committee ready for what he would call defensive action so it was a uh, a way to get um uh, military intervention using the military revolutionary committee to do so so when we talk about trotsky what about lenin what did lenin do to the um, october revolution so after he was uh, after he flee russia again because he was accused of being a german spy so he was accused accused of being a German spy a German spy so as soon as that happened he fled however he um, returned to Petrograd secretly on uh, the 10th of October 1917 and he returned to persuade the Bolshevik Central Committee to support an armed seizure of power in Petrograd so not all the Bolsheviks so it, what should be noted is not all Bolsheviks um, were quite on board just yet with the idea of a, a revolution. Uh, so not not all Bolsheviks, not all Bolsheviks um, were on board just yet. Just yet. Obviously, it's the. Um, the, the sort of the, the Bolshevik uh, Lenin Marxist Leninism and the ideology um, calls for revolution. However, the Bolshevik Central Committee uh, needed persuading um, to uh, be able to support uh, a full on armed seizure of power in Petrograd. Uh, the Bolshevik uprising, however, was unable to organize um, an uprising without the approval of the Central Committee. And uh, Lenin had written to the Central Committee in this September. Um, effectively, he was urging them to seize back the power and 
one thing that was important is that the Central Committee ignored Lenin's proposal to do so. So this was a month before, this was in September. However, when he returned to October, he was able to convince the Central Committee to endorse his plan. So, again, the Central Committee also... So the Central Committee uh, also uh, took some persuading. Took some uh, persuading. Which is important. Trotsky was given the role of planning an uprising in detail. Okay. So as we can see, the events leading up to the October Revolution um, really began with the uh, June Offensive, and Lenin and Trotsky and the and the Bolsheviks saw this uh, June Offensive as an opportunity to um, finally launch the revolution. Okay, they were just waiting for the provisional government to make mistakes to 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 make um you know to cause problems and one of the biggest things that um one of the worst things they could have done was to launch a new offensive in the first world war which is exactly what they did and this led to uh, and this led to the uh, revolution the the coup also the the Kornilov coup uh, also um empowered the petrograd soviet uh, to be able to defend Pet uh, petrograd and then the role of lenin and trotsky was important in not just trying to create the revolution itself, but also to try and convince things like the Central Committee and um, the Military Revolutionary Committee uh, to um, support the revolution too.